that that Eric Young comes out. And here's the thing, Eric Young. I I know you're not familiar with Eric Young before WWE, but you know. What I'm saying? Oh, she's missing out. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I've heard. You ain't say thing. that. You ain't say that, bro. But uh. And like, I'm not talking about Super Eric. I'm talking about a little after Super Eric, a little before the Daniel Bryan thing, kind of in that middle middle spot. Yeah, I mean, like, cause I used to watch Eric Young all the time on TNA. But I yeah. didn't. This, I actually liked him when he was in NXT. Oh yeah, well he did too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just he did too. Oh, poor baby. And he calls he he called WWE a broken system. And I'm gonna kinda like break down some of the things that he said. Even if you don't, I feel I agree. Yes. <laughs> I agree. Um he told Busted Open Radio, because he was on, did an interview, of his experience with WWE and the the problems he encountered on the main roster. Mm-hmm. He said the NXT part went great. I was treated well. Hunter and me worked very closely on development of sanity in the group. Mm-hmm. I really felt felt like I had a say of what went on. Obviously, not the final say, but I was uh, listened to and asked to contribute. The NXT run. Sandy was one of the top acts in the whole company. What? It was. Yeah. Then we transitioned to the main roster, and everyone knows how it went. It didn't go well. Sometimes you fall out of favor. It's not what you did or didn't do. I never changed who I was, and I'm not going to. I'm not a political person. Never have been. That's probably been a uh, a, a hindrance on my career. I refuse to be political. The truth is, the system is broken. It's hard to get a word in. Even when you're doing nothing, it feels like you're trying to fix people's mistakes all day. There's no creativity. They want everyone to be the same, bump the same, sell the same. There uh, and there's millions of rules. Those change daily. Mm. It's really hard to understand what's going on. The system is flawed, and I would say to anyone there, and Vince himself, I'm not the first person he's made a mistake on, and I won't be the last person he's made a mistake on. I don't think it's any anything personal. Anytime we were in a room together and we spoke, he was always respectful. I had two decently, two decently long conversations. Uh, they went well. I thought he understood where I was coming from. Yeah. I, I'm a man and I'm not going to stand in a hallway for hours to talk to him. I could be wrong and stubborn on my part, but I'm a 40-year-old man, and I'm not going to wait in the hallway like a child to maybe get five minutes to talk to him. I said my piece. He seemed to be responsive, but nothing ever came of it. I don't take it personally. He made a mistake, and as the leader of the company and the person who decides everything, remember that line, the person who... Who decides everything? Did he say that, or you saying that? That's what Eric Young just said. Okay. It's a massive mistake. You have a three-hour television show. If you can't find five minutes for Eric Young, your show is broken. <laughs> You're supposed to be your own biggest cheerleader. Exactly. So, I agree a lot with what Eric Young is saying because you know, a lot of things. You know, once again we see as fans on the outside mm-hmm. but you know the system's broken on the inside and it just so happens that it's so apparent that they they're showing their broken seams on the outside yes they are and uh i was listening to my podcast on sound monster sounds off and he made a good point he says you know they got a new game coming out now, i'm talking about i'm not talking about uh 2k battlegrounds i'm talking about the world of tanks game okay and it's a crossover game because W's been getting a lot, a lot of crossover stuff. Because okay. they, they just had a crossover with King of Fighters. Mm-hmm. And he said the superstars tanks that they, that they have is like Sergeant Slaughter, The Undertaker, <laughs> Ultimate Warrior, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, and think John Cena. I, I All of these question, people before, don't before work he, there anymore. Think, just, just before you even get into it. Yeah. I, what age of people is this for? That's what I was yeah. just about to ask. Just about to ask the same question. I don't know what world takes it because I know it's a it's a console going mobile game, and I don't play. Say, is it a a cell phone game? Because I don't play mobile games, so. so it's a game for your phone, basically. It, it looks like a mobile game, but I think it's coming to console also. So but more I'm than saying, like, even if it's for somebody like even like your age, y'all age, mm-hmm. who wants to play with Sergeant Slaughter over like other people? Way you know, other people. Just saying. 
I mean, no, you're you're absolutely right. And he was saying the same thing when they brought back the the, the WWE ice cream bars. Mm-hmm. It's Roman Reigns, Macho Man, Becky Lynch, and John Cena. Why? And now once again, Becky's not there. Roman's not there now. I mean, when the bars came, he, he was right there. Cena is, you know, what I'm saying part time at best, mm-hmm. and Macho Man's dead. Yes, like you can't even put a, a a legend who's alive on there. Like I can see if you say we have. I, yeah. Run with me on this. We have these these new ice cream bars. In each box, you get one legend ice cream bar. Mm-hmm. So this box is Macho Man Randy Savage. This box is Hulk Hogan or whatever. I could see that. But why are we doing promotion, active promotion, for new products with stars who have not wrestled with your company in over... I don't know, 20 years at this point? Yeah. And Macho Man been going for how long? 2011. So, what? Also, because uh. I was listening to that portion of the Solid Monster um, podcast as well, and it was just like, they are living, like he was saying they were living in the past, they're definitely, they're just living off of that the glory days as they see it. And it doesn't make any sense because if this is a mobile game, the demographic more than likely is like our son. Yeah. Who's 10, will be 11 this year. He might know who Stone Cold is or know who The Rock is, but the rock that he knows is the rock that was in Jumanji. Yeah. Uh, and they, are, they do not give a shit about a Sergeant Slaughter or they definitely don't care about an Ultimate Warrior. And like I said, at best you got Stone Cold and The Rock. Like, what are we? What exactly are we doing? John Cena, fine. But 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 it's I'm not. Confused. But, but, but actually, I'm not fine with Cena neither. I'm not saying I'm fine yeah. with him being on it. I'm saying if you're going, if you're trying to reach this demographic, mm. the only person on there that they would be able to readily identify is John Cena. Vince McMahon has this problem because you know he he mentioned also this past week that he needs to create new stars, but he, this is the problem. How many? Uh, probably, it must be a rest of fans. How many times have you heard quotations? Vince McMahon said, "I need to create new stars." <laughs> did, he, did, did he not come out in the ring and had everybody surround the ring after the action and say, "I want to see who has ruthless yep. aggression." You need to reach for the brass ring. Not before I tell you to, though. WWE, for the past three years, have had the most loaded roster of all time of any wrestling company. And the thing is, Vince McMahon cannot see the fact that he gets tired of people. The the attention span is just like an ant. It just doesn't... I don't know if it's his attention span or if it's just him being a fickle person. Anyway, I am starting to wonder if he's stuck in his glory years. Well, he is, but I'm saying he don't see what makes Alistair Black Alistair Black. Yeah, he don't understand the appeal. And then once again, it, it well, exactly. And then once again, he doesn't see what makes Ricochet Ricochet. You know, you, yeah, he only sees. Oh my bad. Sorry. No, 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 no. Go, 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 go ahead. I, you know, you know, he only sees jumping flips. That's it. That's yeah. it. They see that as I think they see that as fleeting. It's like Rey Mysterio came in and that was cool, but that's that's all we need. I I don't I don't understand that mentality. It's to me the one of the best examples right now that's happening right now. There's a bunch of them, but Bianca Belair, you have a struggling ass women's division. Like on late struggle, but not, not as much as AEW. But go ahead. I mean, well, you yeah, know, it's uh. not like that. When I say struggling, it's like you could be doing more with this. Why are you not utilizing everyone in anything you have? We doing karaoke yeah. segments because apparently that's more important, right? With Lacey Evans and Naomi, like, what are we doing? Where is Bianca Belair? She comes back to tag. With Ruby Riot and got Ruby Riot running around clapping at people, like what are we doing? I don't, I don't understand. You know, it goes, it goes 
more deeper than that also. I mean, I know. I'm just saying, one I'm, that comes off the top of my head. Uh, I, I sit there and I, and I, I looked at, look, look at the, the, the stars that we have. And then obviously with the, with the COVID going down, this is your opportunity to make new stars. Mm -hmm. If you look at how Triple H has made Keith Lee, mm -hmm. how he's worked with Karrion Cross, how he's worked with uh, the Undisputed Era. Cosplay Goldberg? Yes, Cosplay Goldberg. <laughs> how, how he has brought up Dominic Dajakovic, how he has uh, you know, brought up Io Shirai and Rhea Ripley, how the Robert Stone brand is actually entertaining. You know what I'm saying? As it's not just some throwaway group that they made. This is when you carefully calculate and you put different segments on TV for people to remember mm -hmm. and to help grow and to do things like that. Then, then, then you get to the main roster. You got Samoa Joe, on, first of all, on commentary. On commentary. And, I mean, it, he's good on it, but I'm just like, but I, Joe need to be in the ring, you know? He does. I mean, it, it yeah. does not help that he is better at it than some of your commentators. Yeah. yeah, that's problematic. But <laughs> uh, you know, and then it's like you 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 pick and choose these big guys. Like, okay, Lashley's gonna be fine. McIntyre's gonna be fine. But you know, you you're you're doing a slow build, but you're not taking you you're not taking time to build anybody else. Mm -mm. And it's it's the thing where I really like he stuck in the the way Vince McMahon books television. Is like he's booking like it's once again like it's either 1991, mm -hmm. 1995, like back when there was no Nitro, back when his I mean right now AEW's out there but he don't see that all the threat that Vince sees as AEW threat is that guys are leaving to go to AEW, yeah. but he don't see an AEW like it's going to grow enough to kick me out the wrestling business. I'm the top shit right now. Yeah. So when there is no competition, there there, there is no need that everybody's not the same. Also, because I think it's AEW doesn't directly compete with one of the brands he cares about. Yeah. If AEW had to co directly compete with SmackDown mm. and was getting better ratings than SmackDown, yeah, then maybe he'd give a shit. Probably still not, but maybe. Like the whole sanity. Th I I think this is what really happens because Eric Young said why well, his time there he was really fall he was falling out of love with wrestling. Then when he got back to Impact, he started to love it again. Because, you know, you know what I said? These, these, all, all these wrestlers, they they want to take their shot at WWE. But WWE is the, the, the big company. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's, that's the money maker. That's, you want to be at WrestleMania. You want to do all that stuff. But once again, when they go to NXT, a lot of these guys, is that they got a chance to build their personality, build who their character is. And then if they come to the main roster and Vince don't like that character, or if it's though that... I don't think that the audience is going to be in tune with this because once again, you got to think the demographic has grown to more kids now, not us. It ain't about us anymore, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. And but sometimes you got to understand just like I just like we being my, uh, my wife was telling my mother the other day, these kids today are not that dumb and naive. There's too us. much outlets for this, this stuff to happen. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, like. You mean tell me if all of a sudden Eric Young came out of nowhere and they gave him a title shot and he won a championship, dumb kids are gonna remember like, oh, he was getting, he was chasing for that twenty four seven championship and getting his ass bust months ago. They didn't forget that, and he, he's expecting that they, that they have gone up there and they have completely forgot that. The same thing with the whole R Truth and, and and Drew Maverick thing, Drake Maverick thing. That thing worked. They made it work, but now R Truth has nobody. He has nobody. They to stripped play him off car. Of. They, they stripped him off. Stripped him of Carmella. Uh, Drake Maverick's on, on NXT, and I'm just like, so now R. Truth is if he has nobody to play off of, he has no storyline. He's around and looking look like a joke. And you know, I don't understand. I, I'm sure there was an end game there, but splitting him and Carmella up didn't do hmm. either one of them a service. Like it did both of them a disservice. It did. Cause what is Carmella doing? She, I ain't seen on TV. Doing the podcast. <laughs> ever since, especially ever since she got sick. I ain't seen her back. I ain't seen her do anything of substance. Yeah, no, I mean, least. I understand why I did that because Corey Graves on SmackDown. But uh, <clears throat> I would have bought Archie over to SmackDown. I keep on SmackDown. I mean, yeah, it's like what is that? Because it's not like him being on Raw makes that big of a difference. Yeah. But see, even if the demographic is kids, this is the, this is the part about being out of touch. If the demographic is kids. You still not pushing the people that the kids care about because if you had somebody that could make him understand. 
like that's going to uh. happen, Twitter or Instagram, you'd see there are kids all over the place who are who look up to and dress up like and get excited about your Naomi's, your Bianca Belair's, your um, Lacey Evans, as far as like the women. You and you got kids like that want the Mustafa Ali mask and stuff like that. Yeah. They, they uh-huh. this is the people that resonate with the kids. The kids don't give a shit about the big, a big Braun Strowman for real. Like I'm not saying that nobody cares, but it's not like that's all they are. But to. but you're right. But once again, you took you took it. When you t- you have taken the mystique away from Braun Strowman. I don't even care about him being champion. Yeah, I, sometimes you forget. And I'm I, like, listen, I yeah. definitely did last week. I was like, Wait, oh, Braun shit. Strowman's champion. Universal. Completely yes. forgot oh, about it. Okay. Yeah, so he he's a Universal champion. But once again, what title defenses he had against? He he won against Miz and Morrison at um. You know, uh, at, at, at backlash or or, or where, wherever it was made. I don't know the handicap match he had, and he, he beat him. <laughs> so, Y'all not doing no yeah, him no like favors that. with that forgettable ass swamp match. Yeah, they're not doing him no favors. But once again, they try, try, try to pull out their eggs and bats with the fiend. Mm-hmm. But I'm but there, there, there's so many people you can play off of because once again, you can complain about not having anybody on the roster because everybody wants to you know leave for the COVID. I'm like, you have willing people there. Mm-hmm. You have well, there's Cesaro, there's Shinsuke Nakamura, there is uh, people still arguing about Cesaro. Did you see Mick Foley talking about how Cesaro should have been given a, a I think he said a title run. Cesaro should have been got a title run. Yeah. Cesaro should have been got a title. More, many people agree with him. Yeah, <laughs> it was the whole thing. Said that Dolph Ziggler should have been got. He should have taken more seriously. They they make him out to be a joke. People gotta say that this is. The booking by one man, and then when he got Paul Heyman in charge, and Paul Heyman was just like, "Look, I want to push these guys to try to make. You got to give them when you start from the scratch. Mm-hmm. You got to give them time. Do y'all think all the legends that we have now go back and see how they started? Yeah. Shawn Michaels is part of the Rockers, okay? And then after he threw uh, J- uh, he, Janae tried to get away from uh, from the barbershop, he's trying uh, to jump out the window. Trying to jump out the window. Shawn Michaels had a, a, a string of Intercontinental Championship matches with Tino Santana <clears throat> and Gold Dust and all that stuff to, to build his character up. He had that awesome ladder match at WrestleMania, turned him into a star. Then when it's finally time for him to win a championship, he won the championship and he became the Harper. That's how you build. But it, it took about three, four years to get yeah, to that some point. Yeah, some, some people, people don't even like yeah. that long to invest. Is that Vin, Stone Cold didn't come in as Stone Cold. Stone Cold came in as the ringmaster. Well, maybe that explains yeah. this five-year contract nonsense. No. Come on. You really think that's going to build up right in it? Listen, listen. I know. <clears throat> we know why he's doing this five-year contract. We know. It don't It don't but, have to take that long. It's like when Paul Heyman. I, I, now, we know that Giles and Anderson called Paul Heyman a liar, which he is. And he has lied to a lot of people. But Paul Heyman made a good point when he was on Stone Cold's podcast. I'm about to say, when this man was running from people because they couldn't cash their checks, I believe yeah. anything. <laughs> sure this ran is, from uh, Tommy Dreamer. This, 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 this is what Paul Heyman did. He said, look, he said, if you take a guy like Mark Henry mm-hmm. and week one, you give him a headlock where he takes this guy down and he squeezes his head to almost to a pope, right? And... Each of his matches for the next thirty weeks, he keeps beating these guys with this headlock. Mm-hmm. Nobody get. First of all, now not only did you, you build Mark Henry as this unstoppable beast, but that headlock gets over. Mm-hmm. And then so now, when you have built this guy up, when Strowman was still flipping cars and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and then now you get Braun Strowman in there, it's like that draws Wayne to see what happens. The last time I. There was a match that I was truly invested in in WWE where I was just like, I need to get back home and see this match. Was I'm going to see if you can take a guess, Prime Time. AJ versus Seth? No. Samoa oh. Joe versus Brock Lesnar, Great Balls of Fire. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You meant to That was the last time I was just like, that was the last time that I said, hey, I need to get back and see this matchup because they booked that thing so right that there was no way in hell. I was like, Samoa Joe actually got a chance to take the sting off of Brock Lesnar. That's yeah, how good. good too. What'd you say, man? It started off good, too. 
It started, yeah, it started off great, and I was just like, that, that and that cost money. Great Balls of Fire, it, it, it drew interest. There is no interest anymore because you take the time to not care. You keep, uh, you, uh, it's like you, you, try, you try to build Seth Rollins, but there's, there's nothing for Seth Rollins to do. Who's about to leave anyway? It feels like they have no follow through either. Like, you have <clears throat> decent matches, and then you have shitty endings like the Bailey, <clears throat> Sasha Banks, um, Oscar. You know, yeah. know what I mean? The Sasha Banks and Oscar mm. thing with Bailey. And it's like, y'all come on. Like, <laughs> like, as, as right we now, do better? The reason they got they gotta go to Randy Orton because there's no there's nobody for Drew McIntyre to face at SummerSlam. Okay. He going he's the, but but Randy Orton brought back his legend killer gimmick. Edge got injured, so they had to wait to that match to WrestleMania. But here's the thing. <clears throat> there's nobody for Drew to face. And I'm just like, honestly, this could have been the Bobby Lashley chance to take that, to take that championship off. Mm. 